Hello, everybody. I'm your host, HuffPost Lee Blickley, and welcome to Build Series. Uh, today, we are joined by some of the cast members of Netflix's hit series, 13 Reasons Why. Uh, yeah, all the cheers, please. Uh, the show dropped its second season last Friday, and uh, following the events of season one, the students of Liberty High School are trying to come to terms with Hannah Baker's death um, amid the trial between her parents and their school. Uh, but of course, more revelations bring more tragedy, um, which is all discussed in season two. And today we're about to chat with Dylan Minnette, Alicia Bowe, Devin Droid, uh, Ro uh, Ross Butler, and Christian Navarro to discuss everything that happens in season two. But let's first watch the trailer. I felt like this whole thing was going to be over. But it's not. How far does the dark go? What are you going to do about that? happening in this photo and you don't know what happened after we're all in this together now don't you know about what goes on at this school this is proof of who they all are the truth doesn't always make things right it's gonna keep happening it doesn't stop there is nothing left worth having except justice for our daughter I can't count on anyone else anymore. I have to do this myself. You don't. No one's gonna get justice for her. Everybody, let's welcome Dylan, Alicia, Christian, Devin, and Ross from 13 Reasons Why. Look at all these screams. Are you guys used to these screams yet? What's up? Are you guys used to these screams yet? You're like, I can't hear over the scream. Oh, man. No. <laughs> um, no. No. You're like rock stars. <laughs> um, so season two came out on Friday. How has this been, Dylan, for you um, over the weekend? How has the reception been? What have you been seeing um, from fans? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I haven't been on my phone very much. I've kind of put it down uh, for the weekend. Um, I've been kind of just locked in my house, uh, you know, it, I kind of did a similar thing last year, like when the show came out, I was in my house all weekend, and then the whole first week it was out, I was cat-sitting for some friends, so I sure. did not venture, yeah, I did not venture out into the world at all when the show came out, and then it was kind of a, a shock when I first went outside and people started coming up to me about the show, but anyway, this year it's similar, I kind of haven't gone outside yet, but um, this is my first time out since the show's been out, really. Were you cat-sitting this time around, too? No, nope, no, nope, not cat-sitting. <laughs> So Alicia, for you, um, how is this reception different from season one? Because I'm sure with the first season, you didn't really know what to expect. But maybe going into season two and having it released, you had a feeling that people would be talking about it right away. Yeah, I was way more anxious for sure. Uh, I told myself that I would lock myself in my apartment when the show came out. Uh, and then I went to Universal Studios because I <laughs> forgot the show was out. And that was not the best choice. But I had a great time. I went to Hogwarts. It was great. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely knew that we had a larger audience the second go around, but I was excited for it to just to be finally out mm -hmm. so people could see it, but yeah. And so, Ross, you have a big part in season two, um, and were you prepared for that? Did you know that your storyline would kind of evolve? Did you kind of all, all of you get that sense that your characters would get a little more in-depth? Uh, with the second season? Yeah, I, I think all of us talked with Brian Yorkie like before the, the season started and he gave us a lowdown on what was gonna happen. So he kind of told me wow. what was gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean- Brian's very need to know. 
Yeah. Uh, like none of us kind of knew. With you yours, I, I think maybe he, he kept that a little bit under wraps because yeah. well, not too. to scare. Well, I kept it a secret from, from you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're arguing. Yeah, the, the, we're in character right now. No. Um, yeah, he told me about it. And I was excited. So, yeah, this, this has been great. And thank you guys for all the support. Yeah. How did. Does- Ross was, uh, Ross was r- actually very secretive. Like, there were so many. None of I mean, to be honest, none of us really knew what was going to happen by the end of the season with the scripts, and we were all speculating, and we were like, I remember one point, we like, Ross is the one, Zach is the one doing all the threats. Like, we were so oh. convinced. Oh, and then, yeah, and then he that. wouldn't confirm or we deny thought Scott anything. Was yeah. behind he was just everything. like, I don't know, and wouldn't, and wouldn't tell <laughs> us anything, so. Stonewall. Uh, yeah. I remember Stonewall. last year, too, we did a marketing shoot for the posters, and Netflix gave us Polaroid cameras, and Ross had his in his, in his apartment all year. And we all did, and everyone was like, kind of just taking Polaroids of each other, and it kind of made the mystery all that much more like, hmm, well, I'm <laughs> going to look into cool this. Mm. Or was I'm, that on I'm, purpose? I'm pretty sure Dylan. I don't know. I remember everyone had I, I think you called it. If I'm not mistaken, I think you called Ross being the guy like earlier on. I think I called. Spoilers? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's out. We could we could talk <laughs> we could talk some spoilers. You have Amazing. you most of you watched all? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, watched, okay. Thank you. You already watched spoilers. the whole thing. Thank you. Whoa. We've seen it twice in a row. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I speculated everyone. I didn't trust anybody. Yeah, I, I think I think Dylan had a theory about everyone being the threat, the yeah. person giving out the Polaroids, and could have been me. It could have yeah. been me for all I knew. Yeah. Is it hard though to keep that secret from your castmates, or is it more fun to see them kind of guess? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of yep. fun. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I mean, as some people Sadistic. know, I'm, I'm a big. You Oh yeah, I knew. From, I knew from the beginning. What? I knew that I was giving out the Polaroids. I knew all that, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow. Now you don't know who to trust, right? Yeah. You're I don't like trust anybody well, anymore. From, but it came from a good place. <laughs> yeah. Came from a good place. Well, everyone knows that I like playing games, so I, I liked like watching all you guys trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Playing mashup with our hearts and feelings. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, everyone loved the Zach and Hannah uh, love story, right? Yeah. Hannah. Um, which I don't want to give. We could spoil that, but I don't want to give away the details. But what was it like for you to find out that uh, you and Hannah had had that connection, like Zach and Hannah, this magical connection that no one knew about, a summer romance like Greece or something? Yeah, it, it blew my mind when, when Brian told me. I was just like, what? There's no way. Um, yeah, so when I got told, it was, it was intense. Yeah, I, I got pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. And how did you feel, though, Dylan, being like, what the <laughs> heck? Clay, uh, poor Clay. I was I was immediately just so interested in how um, Clay would react. I could already imagine because Brian told me pretty early on. Actually, that's the one thing he would, he would give me. He gave away like two things. I forget what the other one was, but he told me that um, pretty early on. And uh, and I, I was just immediately like, I can only imagine how Clay would react to that news and and how he would feel about that. So I was really interested, and I thought it all felt pretty organic when I read the script of you know Clay finding out and and going and and confronting. Zach about that, which, you know, Clay is a little out of line, but he's act, but he's acting emotionally and that he's just acting how he feels. But, um, it, but it felt pretty real to me. So I was just like, oh man, Clay's not going to take that very well, and <laughs> he didn't. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. I have to say, bravo, my friend, this season you are phenomenal. Um, and Clay kind of uh, he's kind of angry this season. He he has he has his moments. What was it like for you to bring this character? Um, into this new storyline and kind of live with him post Hannah in a way Hannah's still around yeah you, but yeah I mean I think Clay um, for the most part is really good at putting up a, a wall and kind of um, and and consolidating his emotions for other people but I think uh, deep down he is a really a really angry kind of tortured soul and um, and you saw that a lot in season one you saw it come out a bit but you see it come out a lot in season two. Um, and what doesn't help the fact is that yes, he is still living with the memory of Hannah quite literally. I mean, he, he imagines her with him all season and he, um, he cannot put her to rest and it kind of drives him to a breaking point as we see. Uh, and, and for me it was, it was all about making sure that, you know, I I didn't know as much about where Clay was going to end up at the end of season two, like I did in season one, but I had an idea and I wanted to make sure that um, you know it tracked, and that and that you are are seeing Clay go in kind of a, a downward spiral throughout the season. Um, just wanted to make sure that that all felt real, and um, luckily the writing was uh, super consistent and, and all made a lot of sense for Clay, so it made it easier on me. But um, 
Yeah, there was there was definitely new places to explore uh, with Clay this year. You really got to kind of go even deeper into his psyche and see what's going on. And it's you know it's not it's not pretty, but um, I think you know. But Clay seems to be on a path to recovery uh, by the end, which is which is good. But I don't think Clay will ever fully recover. I mean, I don't think any of these kids will. <laughs> it's kind of having having a traumatizing time. But, yeah. um, for you guys as a cast, uh, what were your thoughts on ha seeing Hannah as kind of a ghost this season? Um, were you surprised by that story choice, Devin? Yeah, uh, I think it was kind of, uh, everyone was kind of interested to see how that was going to play into the story. Um, but I think it's, it's really amazing to see how Dylan really is, you know, a master of his craft and how he plays that role and kind of, yeah, you can smile. It's okay. <laughs> um, so. And just, you know, the way that it's kind of formulating his conscience and, and the way that he's, you know, dealing with, with grief and, and letting go of someone that he cared so deeply about. And I think it played really well, especially in the way that, again, you just being so great as your character and just playing all the emotions in the right way and, you know, showing that grief and that trauma, I think, is really something that's... Right back at you, man. Thank you, buddy. Thanks. It's emotionally connective. You guys are all really good at being really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, De too. Devin, for sure, you have uh, quite a season, too. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows what happens. I don't want to, again, get too deep into it. But how is it for you this season coming in? And did you know kind of the arc that your character would take? And how did you feel about bringing that to life on screen? I knew part of it. Um, last year, I think in episode 12 of season one, as people can remember, Tyler buys the handgun. Um, and I think we were shooting... We were shooting 9 and 10 at the time, or 10 and 11? I think we were shooting 10 and 11, and then I got the scripts for 12. Um, and I remember reading it, and I see Tyler buying a gun, and I was immediately like, Brian! Because I didn't know what was going to happen. And my immediate thought was, oh, man, I'm getting killed off. And then Brian was like, hey, let's have a chat about this. And he was like, so we were really interested in this idea if we get a season two of exploring this storyline with gun violence with your character as Tyler. Um, and again, this was back in summer of 2016 mm -hmm. when we were shooting, and they, they were writing it in April before the season even started, so April 2016. Um, so I was really excited um, to, you know, kind of have more of a character to explore. Um, and the idea of uh, um, a topic that's unfortunately so relevant in our society and our culture, especially with young people, um, I think it was kind of intimidating to take on, but also for me it felt really important. It's something that I've been really close to. Um, I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and I remember being a really young kid and being homesick, and for the first time in my life really understanding that the world was unfair was sitting at home during the Virginia Tech tragedy. And so it really kind of hit home, and then growing up, I'm, I'm the youngest cast member on this. I was 18 when we did season one. I was only 19 during season two, so I feel very very close to a lot of the topics that we're hitting. Um, and, and, you know, it is intimidating, but it's really important what we're trying to spread awareness and conversation about. And anything we can do to keep the conversation going from letting that fire extinguish and for holding people's feet to the fire to hopefully move towards a solution, I think, is important. Yeah, quite beautifully said. And, and Christian, how did you feel... Um, you know, talking on the, those topics that are so important and relevant in our time now and bringing those topics to teen viewers. Um, how do you feel to be a part of the show and, and to kind of use your own story as Tony um, to relate to viewers in a, in a certain way? I think we're all, we all take this very seriously and I think it's a big responsibility for each of us. Um, but we all, it's a privilege as well, I think. And uh, Everyone wants, you know, growing up, the dream for uh, all of us on this stage anyway is to be an actor and be on a show. Uh, I don't think any of us imagined that we would be on a show with this uh, level of import, uh, important, excuse me, or, or uh, the impact that it's had here in the States and then globally. I think that all took us for a surprise. And so we're still um, dealing with that uh, every day. But I am political by nature. And I, think, I think most of us here are. And so uh, it's also important to be making a difference right now. Uh, and touching on the issues that we're touching on in our show, specifically in season two. Obviously, uh, it was written and produced way before um, m most of these school shootings, um, but it's prevalent, and our show uh, 
helps to spark a conversation as it did last year with suicide and bullying and sexual assault. Uh, hopefully the same conversation will be sparked uh, this year uh, with, with gun violence. Mm -hmm. and gun violence and also uh, sexual assault sure. for Jessica's character. Um, how was that, Alicia, for you to be able to, you know, come from season one and not just leave that storyline hanging there, but to give this character kind of a redemption a little bit where she was able to open up about her own story um, and get a little bit of closure? I was incredibly excited because the last episode where she finally tells her dad, in my eyes, was the beginning of everything, of her actually admitting to herself what happened and um, her road to recovery. And I feel like that's not covered a lot in TV shows or film is the road to recovery of a, of a survivor at all. And I was so incredibly excited to be able to explore that storyline because it's tough and it takes a really long time and people don't realize how permanently it affects you mm -hmm. and how it affects your day-to-day -day life and what you have to go through, including um, you know, anxiety disorders, PTSD, and we really get to see Jessica struggle with all of that. Uh, and, the, and learn the importance of having a strong support system and being able to talk about it. And on the flip side of it, I think by filming the second season, I learned the right way to be there for someone who's going through that thing because it's very hard because as you see my dad, like he in the show, he loves me and he doesn't always have the right answers. He doesn't know exactly what to do at times, but you see him change gears when he finds out, he figures out that something doesn't work for Jessica. He's like, okay, let's do a different thing. Let's not be this, I, I let me not be that aggressive. We'll be ready. I'll, uh, I'll be there for you when you're ready to talk. So it was a huge learning experience for me personally, but I was so excited to really tell Jessica's story because unfortunately it happens so much uh, and it's incredibly relevant and I really feel like it's such an important story, especially for young girls. And there's a really powerful montage in the last episode, kind of within this Me Too movement, too, that you guys kind of, um, you know, show how common it is for women um, and men and sexual assault. Uh, was that powerful for you to see that the show is kind of bringing an even bigger light to these issues that are kind of being talked about across the world? Yeah. Uh, so we started... The, the Harvey Weinstein article came out right in the middle of filming. So I've been... So Jessica's storyline was already, we, I already knew what was going to be the end point. So it was incredibly empowering to go into work every day and be reminded of how important the story was because I would wake up, there'd be another article of a woman coming, uh, 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 coming out against her attacker. And it was, it was empowering. And I was so happy that the show wasn't, a, wasn't afraid to really touch on it and tell the truth of it. Yeah, Ross, how do you feel to be a part of a show uh, that doesn't shy away from, from these issues, especially when you know you're aimed uh, towards young viewers who could really take something away from this and learn from it? Does that put a weight on your shoulders a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Um, going back to what Christian said, I think we all feel like we have a responsibility uh, to use our platform to influence our culture and to influence the next generation. And because, you know, everyone's going to be graduating from high school soon, the people that are watching the show, and they're going to be forming their own opinions on things. And to be a part of that process is, it's, for me at least, I, I can't speak for you guys, but it, yeah, it's an honor. And I feel, I wouldn't say it's a weight, it's, um, but it, it does feel, uh, I'm not sure what the word is exactly, but uh, to be influential, it's, it, feel, it feels good. Yeah that I, we can make a difference. You know, something that's really interesting, more, more so than our influence, young people, you guys here, I mean, we're seeing this year, in the last couple of years, but particularly this year, they're starting to be heard and listened to, and, and they're starting to speak up and speak out and speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. And I think if we could have any uh, effect on that in any regard, then we've, we've done our job successfully and we'll hopefully continue to do our jobs. I think you guys have. Yeah. Yeah, Dylan, for you, um, you know, in a similar vein of this question of when you go on social media or you see reactions to the show, um, good or bad, um, how does that make you feel that you're actually, this story is getting people talking and getting people discussing issues that, you know, two years ago teens weren't talking about. Now they're more, you know, able to go to their parents and say, I watched 13 Reasons Why, let's talk about it, which you guys are trying to promote this season especially. You know, talk to adults, talk to people about what you're seeing on screen, don't just sit with it. Um, 
how do you feel about that? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, like that's exactly our our goal with the show is to um to speak to teens or speak to people of any age, really, and just start conversations, uh, important ones. And um, so, I mean, I think we've all heard some pretty incredible stories about how the show has um, impacted some people's lives or how it's made a difference or how they have reached out to their parents or loved ones about what they're going through. Um, and it really is an amazing feeling. I mean, I've said this a lot, but I don't know, like I've been acting for a long time and and I've, I've gone through different feelings of, of sort of the uh, like acting in the industry itself. And I've always kind of thought, you know, I'm not doing anything important. Like I'm not doing anything to, I'm not changing anyone's life by these performances that I'm doing. But then I realized with this show that like there, there really can be projects or things that you can do that really can make a positive impact on people's lives. And that's, that's this whole show has kind of changed my perspective on, on how, you know, one thing that can be entertainment or art really can make a difference um, for certain people. And it feels pretty incredible. Um, so it just feels nice to be doing something important with this for once, you know? And, uh, and I don't know, it's really inspiring. And I, I, I'm really proud of the show and what, what we've accomplished so far. So, yeah. So when, uh, you know, when Brian comes to you, say, uh, Alicia or Devin, you both have scenes uh, that are, you know, graphic in their nature. Uh, were you nervous about shooting those scenes or were you kind of empowered to be like, I'll, I'll be able to shoot this and people will be able to see this and maybe I can help some people get through tough times in their own life? Uh, I, th I was, I didn't really think about it that much because it was more about serving Jessica's story. I, and, um, it took me a while, or it took me a bit to really kind of forget about Alicia in a way and be like, this is really important and, and this story needs to be told. And, cause it was, it's really hard to film. Um, and it just took a lot of mental preparation for sure. But I didn't, the first season I had no idea how big the show was, so I didn't even think about it coming out, you know? I didn't even think about how people were gonna receive it. Now, I kind of hate it, but like going into the second season, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a meme, or like, but that, I didn't have that mindset at all the first season. So it was really just about um, mentally preparing for it and reminding myself how important that story is. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I kind of have, I guess, a different um, perspective because I guess mine didn't come until the second season when I did know how big and how talked about the show was and the topics portrayed in it. Um, so when it did come time to get to the final episodes and Brian was kind of walking me through this idea of what would happen to Tyler, um, it was incredibly intimidating um, because you're suddenly given this responsibility to portray this horrific thing that unfortunately happens to many people around the world and a lot to young people these days. There are you know, a quick Google search shows you many instances of these things happening uh, to other people in schools. And unfortunately, a lot of them are even younger than Tyler. I think there was an article May 1st from the AP about 1,700 cases of, of uh, high school sexual assaults. And that's already coming from an underreported number. And I think that's like between the years of 2011 and 2015. And that's an incredibly tragic and horrific thing to think about. Um, so when you're kind of given this, this scene to do and you're tasked with, hey, you need to represent what other people go through to hopefully show them that they are understood and heard. And for people that don't know what those issues are or don't really have the empathy to hear it and, and understand where it comes from, you have to kind of show them what these instances are like so that they can better understand and so that they can better be prepared to hopefully, you know, uh, bring awareness and, and support someone who does go through it. Um, but, you know, so the intimidation's there, but then, of course, you think about what you're doing and the greater impact that it will hopefully have on people's lives. Um, and it does kind of fill you with a sense of justification or, or like, bringing justice to something um, and saying, you know, hopefully this will help someone and that makes me feel much better about what we're doing here. So powerful. Just that hearing that statistic is so helpful for everybody. Um, and of course, the show talks about very deep stuff, but it also is lighthearted and fun. And I don't want to just, you know, harp on all the the melodrama and stuff. But yeah, you, the friendship, the friendship in this show is great. And even what we see with Tyler and Clay at the end, and 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 just the camaraderie and the support that you guys as characters have shown each other over the course of these two seasons. Uh, 
Dylan, were you excited to see that these these characters that maybe were bullied or maybe some were popular, they're all kind of come together in the end um, to support one another through these really tough times that they're going through? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know that um, a theme that wanted to be explored this season was, uh, you know, these characters finding a sense of community mm -hmm. and, um, and building their relationships with each other. And, you know, I think they've, all these characters have been through a lot I mean, ever since the events of season one and receiving the tapes, I mean, the, these, I mean, the, these kids have gone through some pretty traumatic things. I feel and um, has really taken a toll on them. And so to see them actually find a sense of community with one another in season two, even when a lot of these characters were sort of enemies in season one. I mean, like I know Brand is not here, but Clay and Justin hated each other. I love Justin, your friendship, though. Yeah. Don't you guys love that friendship? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Justin quite literally brought up killing Clay in yeah. season one <laughs> on multiple occasions. <laughs> Clay hated Justin with a passion, and now they're n basically brothers. Yeah. And um, and I thought that was a really that's just one example. I mean, and 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 Cl T Clay was pretty cruel to Tyler in season one, and Tyler hated Clay. And then and then see and you see where they end up at the end of season two. Just there's so many examples, but like I thought it was pretty amazing with all the character growth this season and the development between these people that even through all these horrible times that they've had and, and their mixed emotions about each other, they can still come together and, and find a sense of community for one another when they all need it the most. And that's, um, I think that was a great, I, mean, I was happy we were able to explore that because yes, it is a really dark show and an honest show and it's nice to have those moments of, of hope. Because mm -hmm. um, I think there is still hope for these characters, you know? And, um, but it's just not easy. It's just not easy for these guys. And I think it really helps also show, you know, how we can learn and grow from the past experience of season one and how people can kind of grow as people and learn to be there for each other as well. Mm -hmm. Just even what we see with Zach and, and Bryce and kind of, you know, you kind of step away from that life. Um, Bryce, I'm, I, we didn't even get to Bryce and that whole storyline, but uh, he, Justin plays a great uh character and uh you really don't like him <laughs> yeah. um but then we have of course sweet tony who's uh always with olivia i loved you. i i liked that that relationship though is showing some support for the parent um and kate walsh is phenomenal in this season as well uh, before i go to audience q a what was that like for you to play a teen kind of helping you know a grieving mother throughout the season uh so I'm really lucky. I got to spend a majority of my first season on set working with an incredible number one, mm -hmm. Dylan, who takes care of me and uh, I love you. Uh, and then I spent all of my second season working, most of my second season working with Kate Walsh. And man, it's like going to school again. Uh, it's like an acting class, you know? She is phenomenal. Her work deserves to be uh, lauded and, and uh, respected. Um, and she does it from the center of her really, really, really big heart. That's why she's on the show. So. Uh, yeah, I love every second I get to work with her. I think uh, I've gotten to see some of our scenes together. I think we work well together, and uh, I hope she feels the same. That's all. <laughs> you guys are great. All of you did such good work this season. I wish we had another hour to talk. There's so much to talk about, but I do want to give the audience uh, their chance to ask some questions. Hello. Um, Hi. <laughs> I just want to ask, as someone who wants to be an actor, how has all of your acting careers been? Has it been easy, difficult, a bit of both? And how has 13 Reasons Why affected your careers? Uh, Should the Virginians? Virginians? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I would say it, it's, it's definitely not easy. It's, it's, no. uh, it's a very competitive industry to be in because you don't really need a, prerequis a prerequisite to be an actor. You don't ne necessarily need to go to acting school or anything. Um, so yeah, it's just very competitive and it's just like, how do you set yourself apart from everybody else? And um, I think it's just being yourself, a lot of it, and you know, just not being afraid of who you are. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is also like experience because there's so much that people try and uh, explain about acting and they're like, go to acting class, learn how to be a better actor and a better performer. And I think a lot of that I've kind of learned is, you know, through being an empathetic human being and like understanding how a person might feel in an instance. Um, and then, uh, you know, being able to bring that out. And uh, also, you know, you learn when you're actually on a job all of these things behind the camera that help you so much out as an actor that you don't really get with auditioning, you know, finding your light, finding the lens, you know, learning your marks and finding your beats and things like that. And that's all things that you can build through experience, um, no matter, 
you know, what you're kind of working on, whether you're, you're starting out as doing background or featured extra or something, all of that is experience that's building you up and you're learning through it. Um, and there's a lot of rejection in this business, a lot. And, and you'd be surprised how much of it is, is there for unknown reasons to you. Um, but some of it will just be that you don't look the part in, in the way that the director already has an image in his head of what he wants or something like that. So there's a lot of, you know, just being, I guess, persevering yeah. through through the, the hardships and not letting that dream kind of die and just keep pushing forward. What, what's your name? Uh, Mark. Mark, yeah, so I've been acting for 10 years now, since I was 16. This is the first time I've been on a show like this, so it's a long road, right? I would say the most important characteristic, and I think everyone here has it, unbridled tenacity. You just keep pushing until something happens. If you believe in yourself, uh, Everyone else will start to believe in you eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at Dylan. He made his way all the way from Lost. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he got off that island. Me. From not existing on Lost <laughs> to. Uh... <laughs> it is. It is a very great time, though. I feel to be. I mean, I'm not a young actor in Hollywood, but there's 13 Reasons Why and Love Simon and Riverdale and uh, amazing programs for you guys to really spread your wings a little bit and play characters um, of your age who are not just basic teens and a coming of age story. And they're also incredibly inclusive shows as well, you know, and I really love how progressive, the, you know, media is getting these days where we can include people of all backgrounds and it, it's really amazing and I think that that's really encouraging for other people that want to grow up and be young actors as they see themselves represented and they feel empowered and, you know, proud of that. Who's next? Hi guys, this question is for Dylan. Um, after Bryce testifies, like you have a moment of questioning Hannah Cletus, and you had a breakdown when she goes over her tape again. I wanted to know how did you like you know process that? Like how did you go into that scene? Yeah, um, I, I was, it was. I mean, it's it was kind of brutal reading that script. I mean, it's it's. I mean, think about how much Clay cares about Hannah and and finding justice for her in this unjust society and. Um, and and his deep deep hatred for Bryce because he is a he's just n not a good human being at all as we all know and um, I think just I think it made all the sense in the world for Clay to be after living with Hannah all season when he really didn't want to be uh, having her recite the hardest tape to listen to um, over and over and over again um, I was really intimidated by by that episode to be honest like I I, I you know. A scene of holding a gun to your head is not going to be easy in any way, and and is definitely going to be taxing for sure. And um, I definitely wanted to make sure that it was uh, honest and truthful, and that I wasn't really phoning anything in. And um, yeah, it was really it was really a relief to get that episode over with. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, yeah, it was really difficult. I mean, I think I, I, one of my favorite plot points of the season, though, and I, I kind of Brian wouldn't let me in on on what. Was going where Clay was going to end up by the end of the season, but I, I had an idea, and I and I I felt like that's somewhere it was going to go, um, and when I read that Clay was going to show up at Bryce's house with a gun, I, I knew that wasn't going to go well. So, um, yeah. Anyway, it, it was uh, it was really difficult and, and intimidating, but I I'm I'm happy with how it turned out, and I th I thought it made a lot of sense for Clay, and um, luckily Clay didn't make any. He I mean he made a horrible decision by going to Bryce's house with that gun. Um, but luckily he didn't make an even worse decision and he was able to be talked down. Um, but yeah. yeah. And just describing these scenes, I'm like, you guys really have your work cut out for you when you get these scripts. Um, is yeah, it hard to mentally prepare? I mean, it has to be hard to read a scene and be like, oh my gosh, how am I going to play this? It's exciting. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, so it's challenging. Yeah. So it's, you never get bored. Mm -hmm. I'm like constantly learning, working on 13 Reasons Why, so it's, it's it's a gift, really. Yeah, Brian knows us all pretty intimately, so I think he knows how to push our buttons as far as acting goes, and like really take also us. Also, not to telling them. us things. Yeah, yeah. So he he knows how to write challenges for us and things that I think touch all of us individually. Like he 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 takes the time to really get to know us and to know who we are as people. So yeah, so thank you, Brian. And we have time for one more question. Here we go. Hi. Um, so my question is, what was, so obviously the season is like very heart-wrenching and it has a lot of really hard, like sh 
parts to watch. And so I guess my question is for all of you, and it was just what was like the worst, or not the worst, but the hardest part to like overcome and like the hardest scene that you had to shoot and something that like was really either like amazing to shoot that you're glad you're done with it or was just really hard? I have my answer. It was that last, the last scene in the, uh, the, in the prom when we all come together. I mean, that was just, oh, yeah. you know, like they're hard scenes during the show for each of us, but I think yeah. as a culmination of like two years being in there and then you, the performance you gave and, and everyone just sort of coming there to be, be there for Clay was uh, heartbreaking. I was sitting outside in the tent watching you guys on the TV and I just like started weeping. And that um, song, man, that night we met, gets me every time. Now, yeah. I'm so happy that Lord Huron has had a little bit of a boost from the show, but man, every time I hear that song, I'm like, oh, we're Clay so and Hannah. We're so grateful to him for giving us that song. Yeah. yeah, and also, not only that, but like you're surrounded by 200 other people. Yeah. That's always really intimidating, too. You're like, everyone here <laughs> is watching or knows yeah. what's going on. You're so aware. <laughs> and also, it's like you have to, just to speak on, on <laughs> it's definitely not the most difficult thing in the season, but... In, in like a big thi- dance like that, there's really not, there's not music playing during the scene and you have to be yelling like you're yelling over music. The everyone, most awkward thing. Yeah, and all the people in the background are being silent. So you're just <laughs> yelling over everyone. Like silently dancing. Yeah. Too, so you just hear their shoes squeak. Yeah. And you're like, what's the weather like outside? And I, yeah, and I, know, and I know that you're there like, they've signed NDAs and stuff and they can't, but like you're yeah, like screaming spoilers yeah. and you feel, yeah. and then you feel weird. It was a whole thing for me, but. <laughs> And there's um, so many like technical aspects about yeah. that too. Yeah, because like there's so many people involved, and you know, kind of. I remember even like the the dance in season one. The, we did so many takes about that just because there's so many camera movements and so many people involved. Well, what was it? Episode eight, um, where we had that one lo- long continuous shot in oh, the yeah. hallway. Ooh. that was a five minute take. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the shot season, where we come right? into school and the tapes had just been released and everyone's reacting to it. If you watch it, I don't know if you noticed, but it's it's completely no uncut. Yeah, it's just from the second Justin and Claire walk into school, going with all coming around all the characters, just all the way to Bryce hearing his tape in the classroom. Yeah, um, so we were all waiting in different parts of the hallway, and we had, like all had to have the right cue. And yeah, it was one of the coolest things I've ever done as an actor. It's kind of reminiscent. There's a scene in season one that's also like a long, continuous cut, and I think it starts with like, it's it's like um, Courtney and Marcus walking through the hallway, and I think then I I come up and I I say something to him, and then it ends with like Tim coming down the stairs and pushing me down. Um, it was kind of reminiscent of that, but those things are difficult. And how do you even dance at a dance without music? <laughs> You think you know how to dance until you have to dance yeah. without music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and then now you watch the episode and you're like, I was way off the beat. I won't watch that. I won't watch that. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for being here. I wish we could talk for forever. Uh, but the season is now out. Make sure you're watching it. Thank you all again for talking. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs>